So I'll talk about the epidemiology of COVID-19, uh, global and India updates. Um, so a cluster of pneumonia cases of unknown origin were reported in December 2019 from uh, Wuhan city in the Hubei province in uh, southern part of China. Uh, initial investigation of these cluster of pneumonia cases showed that 66% of the cases had, had exposure to a seafood market. So this was a chilling reminder of the SARS epidemic, which originated also in China in the Guangdong province in November 2002. Investigation of the SARS ep epidemic revealed that uh, the SARS uh, vi virus originated in an animal seafood market in Guangdong, where it was able to jump the species barrier due to close interaction between animals and humans. Confirmed its first case on 30th January. These cases were uh, in students who had a reported history of travel from Wuhan. On the same day, WHO declared it as a public health emergency of international concern to facilitate sharing of data around uh, this COVID-19 between countries and also to facilitate vaccine development, uh, development of medicines around it. Uh, on the 11th of February, this virus was renamed as SARS-CoV-2 and the disease as we know it today as COVID-19. By 11th of March, all the continents in the world were affected by this disease and WHO declared it as a pandemic. And as of uh, 2nd April, more than 200 countries are affected. Leading This disease has led to more than 40,000 deaths. Uh, as of now, the WHO risk assessment at the WHO Southeast Asia region, as well as the global level, is very high because of the ongoing human-to-human -human transmission caused by this virus, its potential impact to human health, and uh, the likelihood of insufficient control capacities in uh, many countries, including high-income countries, as well as low-income countries. So what are coronaviruses? Coronaviruses are a large family of enveloped positive strand RNA viruses. These are ecologically diverse. They circulate in humans as well as animals. They are divided into four genre. The uh, alpha and the beta coronaviruses are already known to affect humans and they cause up to 30% of upper respiratory tract infections in adults. Rarely some animal coronaviruses, they evolve and they infect humans and also develop an ability to spread between humans. Uh, we have seen in the past two decades, uh, two coronaviruses which have uh, led to significant morbidity and mortality, the SARS coronavirus in 2002 and the MERS coronavirus in 2012. And now in 2019-20, we have the SARS-CoV-2 virus leading to COVID-19. So this virus, this is the uh, this is the gene map of the virus, and this gene map shows that although the virus has some similarity with the SARS coronavirus from 2002, yet it is distinct from it. It has a very close genetic similarity to bats, which has led some experts to believe that this probably has originated from bats, although. Uh, 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 a detailed uh, scientific evidence on this is yet to come. So, uh, transmissibility of coronaviruses. Coronaviruses are uh, respiratory viruses. So, they are the ma main mode of transmission of coronaviruses is through infected droplets, through aerosols, which are very small droplets, droplets that are less than five micrometers. And because of the small size, they can also travel longer for more than one meters. And also, through contact with uh, contaminated hands or surfaces. So uh, when a person is coughing or sneezing, they release droplet into the air. If these droplets are inhaled uh, by a susceptible person during close contact, the susceptible person can get sick. Similarly, uh, when a droplet is released by uh, an infected person and a susceptible person comes in contact uh, physical close physical contact with the uh, sick person while shaking hands while hugging this person can get uh, sick uh, the indirect contact if a susceptible if a infected person has touched surfaces uh, and contaminated these such as door knobs uh, uh, lifts uh, 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 light switches uh, lift buttons and when these are touched
touched by susceptible persons, again, a susceptible person can get sick. Uh, the, the virus itself can, is known to survive outside the body. On non-porous hard surfaces, it can survive up to one to do, two days. A recent uh, article in, uh, in one of the uh, academic journals shows that it can survive up to 72 hours. The caveat here being that uh, with the progression of time, the, 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 in, the, the amount of virus that is able to survive decreases. On porous soft surfaces, uh, it can survive for up to a few hours, 8 to 12 hours. The incubation period of the virus is known to range from 2 to 14 days, the median being 5 days. Uh, here we, on this table, we are looking at cases and deaths in China. So during the peak of the outbreak, China reported about 80,000 cases and uh, nearly 3,000 deaths. The overall case fatality rate in China was 3.7%. Uh, even within China, it was the Hubei province which bore the major brunt of this epidemic, where the case fatality rate was as high as 4%, while in the rest of the Chinese provinces, the, the case fatality rate was less than 1%. Uh, uh, if you look at the cases and deaths in China, in Hubei, vis-a-vis -vis other provinces, we see that majority of the cases were in Hubei province, 84%, as opposed to just 16% outside of Hubei province. The figures uh, for death are even more stark. 96% of the deaths were reported in Hubei province as opposed to 4% outside of Hubei. So Hubei province was really the epicenter of this outbreak and bore the major brunt of this outbreak in China. Uh, distribution of cases outside of China. So the numbers are really dynamic and changing every day. As of 2nd April, more than 200 countries were reporting uh, cases outside of China uh, with established local transmission. The cases were about uh, more than 0.8 million. Uh, more than 40,000 deaths have been reported and the case fatality rate overall outside of China is nearly 5%. Now the case fatality rate is not uniform across the globe. There are some countries which have gone uh, where the lethality of this virus has been more. For instance, Italy has a case fatality rate of 10%, Iran 7%, France 5%. Uh, the age distribution of cases in China shows that majority of the cases uh, occur in the older age group, in the, in the elderly and the older age group. The median age is 51 years and the interquartile range is 39 to 60. Of the cases that were affected in China were in this age range of 39 to 63 years. 51% were males and about 4% were healthcare workers. Uh, so, looking at the signs and symptoms of cases, we see that the most of the symptoms that are associated with these illness are respiratory symptoms. Fever was the predominant symptom reported in uh, in patients uh, suffering from COVID in China. More than 85% of the cases reported fever, high fever, followed by dry cough, fatigue, and sputum production, and shortness of breath. Uh, in contrast, uh, abdominal symptoms like diarrhea and vomiting were reported in less than 5% of cases. Most of the cases in this illness are mild cases. 81% of the cases in China were mild cases. Only less than 5% of the cases were critical, which required hospitalization and ventilatory support. Uh, this illness is severe in certain risk groups. So if you look at the age, the case fatality rate by stratified by age, you see that the case fatality rate increases with the progression of age. So whereas uh, in the general population, for every 100 people who are affected, only five uh, lead to a, an adverse outcome of death. In those who are more than 80 years of age, for every 100 persons who are affected, those who are more than 80 years of age, 14 succumb to death. So the case fatality rate with the progression of age increases and it is as high as 
14% in those who are more than 80 years of age. Similarly, uh, those with 74% of those with comorbidity were affected by this illness in China. So persons with uh, uh, persons in the extremes of age, persons who are elderly or those who have comorbidities such as diabetes, such as hypertension, such as COPD, asthma, cancers are more at risk of this illness. So uh, scientists measure the intensity of infectious disease by its uh, reproductive number, co also call as, called as the R0 value. So R0 value is the average number of people a sick person will infect. For COVID-19, this has been estimated to be 2.5 persons. That is, for every sick person has the ability to infect 2.5 persons in the community when they come in close contact. So if we reduce social exposure by 75% through social distancing measures and limited interaction uh, outside, uh, avoiding mass gathering, etc., one person will infect 0.625 people in five days and 2.5 people in 30 days. However, if we reduce social exposure by 50%, one person, one infected person will infect 1.25 people in five days and in 30 days, this person will be able to infect 15 people. Whereas if we have no social distancing measure in place, one infected person will infect 2.5 people in five days and in 30 days, it will exponentially increase to 406 people. So this is the epidemic curve of uh, of COVID-19 in China, the epidemic started in late December. It, uh, it, it, was an, it was on an upswing in January. It peaked in the late part of January and in the early part of February. The Chinese authorities introduced very strong uh, uh, controlled measures, including locking down of the uh, Wuhan city and the Hubei province and preventing travel across different provinces of China in the later part of January. And as, as you can see that this led to a decline, sharp decline in cases. And currently China is reporting less than 40 cases per day. So the, the epidemic has ceased from where it started. This is the epidemic curve of cases outside of China. So uh, while uh, there were no cases reported outside of China in December and in January, a few countries started reporting. However, the, now, as, as I said earlier in my slides, that more than 200 countries are reporting uh, cases and uh, the number of cases has exponentially increased outside, uh, outside of China. This is the epidemic curve of uh, cases reported in India as of yesterday. Uh, 2,902 cases have been reported and uh, our trend is very similar to the trend that is being uh, seen uh, in countries outside of China. So the cases start, there were very few cases in January, February, but the cases started uh, rising in the, uh, in the second week of March. And uh, now we are on the upswing of that epidemic curve. Uh, cases are currently being reported from 29 states and UT. The case fatality rate is 2.5% and the epidemic doubling time currently observed in our country is four days. So every four days, the epidemic size is increasing uh, in our country. So to conclude, uh, COVID-19 is a respiratory pathogen. It is easily transmissible from person to person. Elderly and comorbid uh, persons are at high risk. And this is now a pandemic with global public health consequences. So this China has shown to the world and some other countries like Singapore, like South Korea, like Japan, have shown that uh, we can get ahead of this epidemic through containment and mitigation measures. And what are these measures? These measures involve early identification of the cases through testing, their isolation, uh, identification of contacts of the uh, infected person through contact tracing measures and their quarantine for a specified period of time, then large-scale social distancing. Large-scale social distancing will prevent person-to-person -person transmission and will be able to break the chain of, chain of transmission. 
Along with that, health system strengthening, avail availability of adequate number of isolation wards, medical supplies, ventilators, and public risk communication, uh, emphasizing the importance or, and need for social distancing to break the chain of transmission, uh, need and importance of cough etiquette, need and importance of hand hygiene, etc. So with this, I end. Thank you.